This morning on The Dish, Tracy Malachek Ezekiel. Born in Texas, she found her way into some of New York's finest restaurant kitchens. Now she's back in the Lone Star State, and she's sharing what she learned at Birdie's in Austin. And they just picked up quite an honor. Yesterday, Food & Wine named Birdie's their restaurant of the year, saying it's the kind of place everyone wants in their neighborhood. Jamie Wax stopped by for a visit. On the east side of Austin, in a former Baptist church building, there's a new kind of congregation gathering with no reservations in every sense for the wine and cuisine of Birdie's. Could you fire a beef tartare, please? The restaurant is the creation of chef Tracy Malachek Ezekiel and her husband, Arjad, her partner in life and business, wine director and head of the front of house. I can help pick. Do you want something pink or orange? We met up with the couple at one of the local farms where the produce helps create that crowd. How important is produce here at Boggy Creek Farms as far as what you do in the restaurant? I mean, it's truly everything. Whenever you cook simply, if you don't have a fantastic base ingredient, it doesn't work. So we're really thankful and this is our inspiration every day. Was this part of your inspiration as well as sort of a co-conspirator in the creation of this restaurant to be close to great produce? Um, I wouldn't say it was my intention, it's, that's definitely to Tracy's credit, but I think how we build a wine list and how we change the wine list at Birdie's very much is a reflection of what's in season at any given point. Being so close to a farm reminds us of the duty we have to kind of live up to the food that we're putting out on a plate every single day, and when we pick out the wines for the list, we want to make sure that it's highlighting this stuff. That concept is central to Chef Tracy's creativity. You have a playfulness with your dishes. Do you feel playful as a chef? I definitely feel a little playful with, with my food. Being in Central Texas, I've just been so inspired by our local farmers. You know, I'm not the kind of chef that works on a dish for six months and just keeps perfecting and dialing it in. I'd rather just see the ingredient, go taste together, and try to make it really delicious and pay attention to the technique. Next fire, two fish. The Culinary Institute of America trained chef made her mark in some of New York's most prestigious kitchens, working for acclaimed restaurateurs like Danny Meyer. And New York is where she met her future husband and shared her dream of going back to Texas in a big way. As a native Texan, does it mean something to you to have come home to Texas and be a chef here? It certainly does. And to come back to Texas means a lot because I left and my dad would kind of tease me for being the New Yorker. <laughs> you know, I grew up spending summers with my grandparents in West Texas on their sheep and goat ranch, and I have a lot of those special memories. And to be able to be a few hours from them and to do my dream, which is cook food for people and have a welcoming restaurant for folks, that means everything. This seems like the realization of that ideal of fine casual. I think our approach to creating our dream restaurant was one that we took the fine dining model and we said, you know what? What if we build a better restaurant? What if we take all the pieces of fine dining that we love, but leave behind the ones we don't? So the white tablecloth, don't need it. An extensive dining room team, not necessary. Let's go to table 32, please. How do we create this new counter service model that's still very serious about food and wine and hospitality? Have a great time. Have a good one. Their counter service model means that every diner lines up in an egalitarian way and each gets treated first come, first serve to an extensive wine list and inspired dishes from start to finish, like house brined olives. What we do is we make essentially a warm bath of extra virgin olive oil with a bunch of aromatics. So there's chili flake, thyme, Sicilian oregano, rosemary, and then we steep in orange peels, and that just makes it like nice and aromatic. A gorgeous take on deviled eggs. Tell me about the origin of these beauties. In being a seasonal American with Italian and French influences, I was like, instead of just having a plain deviled egg, why don't we kick it up a notch and make the best deviled egg we can, and then we shave batarga on top. An arugula salad with strawberries, sunflower seeds, and a creamy white balsamic vinaigrette. And as a lifelong beef tartare fan, I have to say, the best tartare I've ever tasted. I don't love a beef tartare that is just beef. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create something that was 
playful kind of like a chips and dip situation where mm -hmm. you can break off the carta de musica and wipe it like you would at a Super Bowl party, but then it's still very serious when you eat it. This is a house-made bucatini. Tell me about the sauce that it's in. First of a season, sun gold tomatoes. So those are just thrown in a pan and cooked with a tiny bit of butter, Sicilian olive oil, garlic, and finished with basil. And so it's just a very simple expression of this time of year. For the main course, snapper with crispy fried shallots. They give a little crunch and also have such a sweetness. And finally, for dessert, a Sicilian-influenced chocolate chip cookie topped with sea salt that's like none you've ever tasted. There's citrus and some fennel, and I feel like adding salt just really makes it pop. This personal and inspired cuisine has garnered Tracy and Arjav's tiny dream many accolades, including the recent and remarkable title of Food and Wine's Best Restaurant. And let's see how that tastes. But for the chef, it's all just salt on the cookie. How much does it mean to you to have your partner, your co-parent, here with you when you need to support that six-month-old child? So our job and I are a real team, and it's constantly a game of communication, of supporting each other. There's some nights where, you know, he's in service working the floor, and Remy's with him just strapped on. I go to Mikey's. And it really tells our story that we are a family neighborhood restaurant. And like many passionately working parents, Tracy and Arjav have managed to find joy amidst chaos. Is there a moment where you realize this, this has worked out just the way you wanted it? I feel like Birdie's has worked out much better than we ever anticipated. We came in confident and hopeful, but we've really been blown away. And it's really important to just take a deep breath and say, wow, we are, we are thankful. We've accomplished everything we want and more, and we have the best team around us to help us do so. For CBS Saturday Morning, Jamie Wax, Austin. All right, so we're told that this chocolate chip cookie right. is like nothing you've ever tasted before. Hey. We'll be the judge of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's mm. pretty good. I love the salt. You taste very, very it. Good. You oh. taste the citrus and even like a hint of the fennel. But can I just say something? You can taste the fennel in that. Citrus I really and can. fennel. It's really good. I didn't know there was fennel in it. There is? I just love. I doubt it. There is fennel. Is there in the cookie? That's what he said. And you, but that said, I'm sorry. She's right. I, She's I'm right. She's love. confirmed. Good, good job. Thank you very much. I, yeah. I listen. Love yeah. the baby on the shoulder. I know.